It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Eccentric Millionaire Murder Case. This program is brought to you by the makers of Anison, the remarkable tablets that bring incredibly fast relief from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. Perhaps you, too, have been introduced to Anison this way. Then you already know how effective it is. But if you have not, try Anison the next time you want really fast relief from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll find Anison tablets convenient to take, and you'll be delighted with the results they give you. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Just ask for Anison. It's spelled A N A C I N. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the eccentric millionaire murder case. Our scene opens in a large rambling house situated in a woody section of Pennsylvania. In one of the littered, unkempt rooms, an old man is seated at the telephone, trying to get an urgent message through to Mr. Keene, the celebrated investigator. A message which is destined to lead to a fantastic murder. Hello, operator. I want to put a call through to New York. No, I don't know the number. I want to call Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. Yes, yes, operator, I'll hold the wire. But hurry, please. It's very urgent. Who's that? No! No. Let me go! you Help! You're joking me. No. No. Are you Mr. Keene, sir? No, I'm his partner, Mike Clancy. You wish to see me? Mr. Keene? Yes. My name is John Prague. I've come to you for help, sir, in regard to the murder of my brother. Murder? Sense preserve us. I didn't read anything about a murder in the Smallins papers. Otis was strangled to death in his home in Pennsylvania. Mr. Keene, I haven't slept for two nights, but I knew how urgent it was to see you, especially since Otis was trying to reach you just before he died. Your brother tried to contact me? Yes. Your name was found on a small slip of paper near the telephone. Mm. They found Otis's body on the floor nearby. I told the local police I'd come to New York and contact you. Mr. Keene, I'm frightened. Not only was my brother's loss a terrible shock, but it was all so mysterious, so, so weird. Sit down, Mr. Prague. Oh, yes, thank you. Just how was your brother murdered? The police believe he was strangled with some kind of a wire, Mr. Keene. When did it happen? Two days ago. Around 11 o'clock in the morning. In the morning? Well, then maybe there was someone else in the house when your brother was attacked. No, no, Mr. Clancy, there wasn't. Outside of the murder... Your brother lived alone, Mr. Prigg? Perhaps I ought to tell you a little about Otis. He was almost 70 years old, 20 years my senior. As a matter of fact, he was only my half-brother. Yes, go on. Otis was a multimillionaire, Mr. Keene. His father left him some securities that later turned out to be a gold mine. They made him a very wealthy man. I see. And somehow all that money did something to Otis. 
He bought a 30-room house in the Pennsylvania Dutch area around Bucks County. He lived in it all by himself. One man living alone in a 30-room house? My brother Otis had become eccentric, Mr. Clancy. For a while, our niece, Elsie Horner, took care of him, and then she left. Well, that was several years ago. Since then, he's hardly ever been seen outside the old mansion. What was the reason for his eccentricity, Mr. Prey? Do you know? No one knew, Mr. Keene. Otis had stopped seeing me long ago. I entered his house for the first time in years after I was notified of his murder. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Prey, who inherits your brother's money? I... I don't know exactly. His will hasn't been read yet. Are you his closest relative? Yes, I think so. Mike, how soon do you think we can leave for Pennsylvania? Oh, just as soon as we clean up the details on the Jordan case, boss. I'd say sometime this afternoon. Well, Mr. Keene, do you want me to wait and drive you and Mr. Clancy out there? No, that won't be necessary, Mr. Prague. Uh, would it be possible for Mike and me to stay overnight at your brother's house? Why, of course. Yeah, I'll give you the keys to the house. And here are directions on how to get there by car. Fine, Mr. Prague. Would you like me to meet you at my brother's house? Sometime tomorrow, perhaps. I'd prefer to investigate this alone with my partner. Well, you may not be too comfortable staying at Otis's place. How do you mean? The house is in disrepair and cluttered with junk. It, it's the queerest place you'll ever see, Mr. Keene. Just being inside the old mansion gives me the, the, the creeps. Well, Mike and I have spent the night in some very odd places. I'm sure we'll manage. Oh, just one thing more, Mr. Prague. You said you were very frightened since your brother's murder. You feel in need of protection? Not here in New York. For some reason, being inside that house gave me the impression that my life, too, is in danger. I, I just can't describe it. I think I understand. Then we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Keene. Thanks again. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Mr. Prague. So long. Sure, and I think I know why you told him not to come out to his brother's place with us, Mr. Keene. Do you, Mike? Seems to me you don't want to investigate a case with a suspect hanging on your arm. Yes, you're right, Mike. John Prague probably inherits his murdered brother's money. And that's something which must be taken into consideration. Sure, and I was thinking that myself, sir. We'll leave by car for Pennsylvania. We ought to make Bucks County by early evening. Then we'll find out at first hand a little more about the murder of Otis Prague in his strange old house. Otis Prague's house should be right around the next bend in the road, Mike. Sure, and it's gloomy out here in these parts, Mr. Keene. Yes, you're right. Oh. There's the house now, boss. Hmm. And just look at the size of the place. A man could get lost living alone Mike, in a... There's a light inside the house. So there is, boss. I thought the place would be empty. So did I. Park over here in front of the door. Right, Mr. Keene. think John Prague may have come here ahead of us after all, boss? But how could he have gotten in? He gave us the keys. Maybe I'd better keep my gun handy. Oh, Mike, don't use the keys. Ring the front doorbell instead and see what happens. I think I hear someone coming, Mr. Keene. What do you want? My name is Keene. We, oh, Mr. Uh... Keene, the famous investigator? Oh, oh, please come in. Thank you. Uh, you look at this old place. It's like a haunted house. Uh, this is my partner, Mike Clancy. I'm Elsie Horner. Otis Prague was my uncle. Wasn't it awful, Mr. Keene? A poor old man like that, strangled to death. I, I, I guess you're working on the case with the police... We haven't contacted the local police yet, Miss Horner. John Prague, your other uncle, asked us to investigate the tragedy. I haven't seen Uncle John in months. Is he all right? He seems to be, although he's naturally very broken up over his brother Otis' murder. Is he? Well, I didn't know they were so fond of each other. 
May I ask what you're doing here in Otis's house, Miss Hornan? Oh, I came to straighten it up. The house is going to be sold, you know, and I want to get a good price for it. You want to? The house was left to me in Uncle Otis's will, Mr. Keene. I spoke to his lawyer this morning. I took care of Uncle Otis for years, and he was kind enough to remember me. Hmm. Miss Horner, do you know anything else concerning the terms of the will? Well, I get some cash. Not nearly as much as Uncle John gets. My goodness, he comes into almost all of it. Well, that's interesting. I think we'll look around. What was that? Sounded like the horn in our car, boss. Go out and investigate, Mike. Yes, sir. What's the big idea? Nice horn, mister. <laughs> Not a tall young fella. Who are you? What's your name? Evan. Evan? Yeah. What's yours? Mike Clancy. Uh, Clancy? That sounds like an Irish name. Well, you're as smart as a whip, ain't you? <laughs> what are you doing here, son? Just looking. Looking for what? Trouble, maybe. Evan, <laughs> where are you? Yeah, I'm over here, Miss Martin. Oh, why did you run away from me like that? That wasn't nice. I... Oh, excuse me. You are related to this young fellow, Miss? Uh, no, I'm a friend of his mother. My name is Hortense Martin. Uh, may, may I ask who you are? Mike Clancy. I'm working with Mr. Keene. The famous investigator? Oh, then, then you must be here about the murder of Mr. Prey. What's the matter, Mike? Oh, nothing important, boss. Are you Mr. Keene? Why, yes. I'm Hortense Martin. I live in the village nearby. I'm sorry if Evan disturbed you. He's, he's really a good boy. <laughs> Not very responsible. <sighs> Well, come along, Evan. I'll I'll take you back to the village. Yeah, I ain't got nothing. He's not developed mentally, Mr. Keene. I've been trying to take him in hand and help him in some way. His mother is ill. I see. Miss Martin, did you happen to know Otis Prague, the murdered man? Yes, quite well. I was interested in buying his home at one time, but he wouldn't sell. He was a rather eccentric person, to say the least. Yes, so I understand. Perhaps you'll allow me to talk to you later on about Otis Prey. You may be able to give me some vital information. I, I don't like to get mixed up in a murder case if I can help it, Mr. Keene. But this would be in the interests of justice. Very well. I have a home in the village. You can come whenever you like. Thank you, Miss Martin. Well, I'd better catch up with Evan. Good night, Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy. Good night. Good night. Sure, and that young lad, Evan, was a queer one, Mr. Keene. What do you suppose he was snooping around here for? I don't know, Mike. But... Sense preserve us. That must be Elsie Horner. Quick, Mike. Let's get back to the house. Miss Horner! Miss Horner! Well, she was here in this room and I left a few moments ago. Miss Horner, do you hear me? Faith and the woman's disappeared, boss. Now, come along, Mike. We'll search every room in this house. This case is beginning to bear out my hunch already. We're involved in one of the weirdest situations we've ever encountered. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the eccentric millionaire murder case. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now Colonos gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. What's more, for me, refreshing Colonos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Helps stop tooth decay. Get Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the eccentric millionaire murder case. Mr. Keene, the plant investigator. Uh, 
Uh, Evan, you, you must tell Mr. Keene the truth. Tell him what you told me just before you ran away. What I told you, Miss Martin? Mr. Keene, he, he admitted killing Otis Prey. Did you tell Miss Martin that, Evan? <laughs> uh, <laughs> looks like our murder mystery solved, boss. We better be taking this lad Evan to the local police. Perhaps you're right, Mike. Miss Martin, knowing Evan as you do, would you have any idea as to why he killed the old man? Evan isn't responsible for his actions, I guess, Mr. Keene. Otis Prague was his friend. He took pity on Evan. Evan was the only one he ever permitted in this house. I imagine Otis Prague didn't know that Evan could be dangerous. Mike, we better tell Elsie Horner if we're going into town with Evan. You want us to drive you in, too, Miss Martin? Oh, I'd rather walk and then get some air. Evan, go with Mr. Keene and his partner. They won't hurt you. And I'll come down to the police station tomorrow and, and talk to you. Ooh, we're going to the police station? Yes, come along, Evan. We'll have a friendly talk on our way to town. And perhaps you'll decide to tell me everything you know. <laughs> Sure, and I feel sorry for this boy, Evan, Mr. King. Look at him, sitting there, grinning like a monkey, with a noose hanging over his head. He'd only talk, Mike. We might learn something about Otis Sprague's murder. Well, it don't look as if he'll open his mouth for love or money. Money. There's lots of money. I bet there's a buried treasure in that house. What's that he's saying? Stop the car, Mike. Well, Evan. So you know where there's a treasure hidden? Yeah, if you didn't bust in on me, I'd have found it. I got a map. A map? Look. He's taking a piece of paper from his pocket. May I see that paper, Evan? Sure. Maybe now you'll believe me. Hmm. Did you make this map yourself? Yeah. I copied it down out of my own head. Mike, turn the car around and get back to Otis Sprague's house as fast as possible. We haven't a second to lose. Do you think it was safe to leave Evan alone in that car, Mr. King? He isn't as dangerous as some people would have us believe. Oh, well, Mike, here's a hole that leads into the cellar of Otis Sprague's house. It's covered with these rose bushes. Evan must have dug through here one day and stumbled in his secret. Well, it's big enough to slide through, boss, but we can go in the other way, through the passage. We haven't got time, Mike. Get your gun out and follow me. Okay. Easy, boss. Hold on to my arm now. There. Okay, sir. We're in. It's dark in this cellar. Somebody fired at us, boss. Without your flashlight, Mike. We can't see you, Miss Martin. You can't see us. It seems as if your little plan is finished. Duck your head, boss. Put your light on again, Mike. There she is. Lying in the corner, Mr. Keene. When she fired at us, I fired back and hit her. Miss Martin. Oh. Boss, look at the floor. Covered with hundred dollar bills. Yes, Mike, it's the hidden treasure. Taken from this secret panel in the wall, which is covered with cement, before Hortense Martin hacked it away. She strangled Otis Prey. He tried to pin the crime on Evan, a feeble minded boy who couldn't defend himself. Miss Martin, can you hear me? Yes. I'm afraid you don't have long to live. Evan showed me this map. It's scribbled on a piece of note paper with your initials on it that he found in your home, Miss Martin. He's trying to talk, boss. Let the boy go. He's innocent. I know that. And I know you're guilty. You followed Evan, hoping he'd lead you to Otis Prague's hidden money. And he did. Am I right? Yes. Evan found out by accident where Otis Prague's money was hidden. Then he lied to me. He said the money 
It was in the safe. When I opened the safe, it wasn't there. That was right after you murdered Otis Bray. Evan thought it was a joke, lying to me that way. So I followed him. And tonight, he led me to the money. And your story about trying to buy the house from Prague was a lie. The fool Evan had told me the truth in the first place. I'd have been rich. Rich. Uh, uh. Miss Martin is dead, boss. Yes. She's paid for her crime in full, Mike. What an odd chain of events. A grasping, money-mad woman discovers that a feeble-minded boy has found a fortune in hidden money. And the boy had found it by accident, through his friendship with the old man who took such pains to hide his wealth. Well, that's why Otis Prague bought this old house and lived here by himself, like a hermit. When he tried to reach me, he must have found out that someone had broken into his house looking for the money. Mr. Keene? Mr. Keene, are you down there in the cellar? Chelsea Horner, boss. Must have heard those shots from upstairs. What's happened? I thought I heard... <gasps> Who's that lying on the floor? It's Hortense Martin, your uncle's murderer, Miss Horner. <gasps> oh! There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Please call the police immediately and tell them the mystery of the death of Otis Prague is solved. <laughs> And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the eccentric millionaire murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the Country Club Murder Case. Ever suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Give longer-lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief. Anywhere, anytime. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>